So, drug dealers aren't responsible for the hurt caused by drugs. They don't make the users take it. However, Matthew 18.7 says, Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offense come. Wait one, one second. What, what does this have to do with drug dealers? Believe it or not, absolutely nothing. So, um, I have a little bit to read to you about what offenses in this case means. Um, and I might as well keep the cyber lie up at the same time, because um, I have to look it up in my lexicon. It's all lexical and crap. It's great. I love it. Okay. And, uh, excuse me, I'm going to have to put a very complicated, uh, bear we, a very complicated Greek word up there, because when we're talking, when it says offenses in uh, the New Testament, and when it says offenses there in Matthew, this is the Greek word that's actually used. Why do I have, um, I have an exclamation mark. Um, well, probably before I get into that, let's actually take it back to Matthew 18.6. Trying to read my own notes here. It's all messed up. It's all scattered. A little scattered brain. Matthew, that's 8. I want 18. I have a book here. Matthew 18.6. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about, about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. That's heavy. And then you get to A7. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For must needs, needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom that, the offense come. cometh. That is very heavy. But what does offense mean in this case? Well, the Greek word for... Uh, I hope I'm going to get this right. It's going to be up there. So you guys... The Greek word that means uh, that is translated to offenses in this case is scandalizo. Take a look at that word. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, now, what does this mean? That's translating to offense. Here's actually what the, lex lex uh, the lexicon I have, the lexical aid I have uh, in my Bible, actually says that the context of this word and the full meaning of this word means that's translating to offense. To commit that which leads to the fall or ruin of someone. Without reference to the element of deceit, it means to throw someone unawares into ruin, to give occasion for ungodly conduct, resulting in the mischief incurred thereby. To craftily entice or lead to ruin, allowing someone to adopt a course in which he will unknowingly come to mischief and ruin. In the, pa in the pas uh, passive, to fall into ruins, uh, ruin unawares, to be offended, or to be caught up or affected by a scandalon, which is you know, another word, uh, which are trap, or to regard something as a scandalon. Yes, a lot of Greek words. Um, so, knowing that, we shall hit the, the trap and I shall explain stuff. So, does that mean drug dealers? No, that's not the offense they're talking about. You know, drug dealers are bad at everything, but when they are talking about offenses in this case, they are talking about... Um, he's answering a sentiment. Um, they, I'm going to finish this thought before I move on, because this is important. They are talking about offenses. Um, they are talking about... Uh, they are talking about offenses. They are talking about attempts that will willfully and deliberately... They're basically talking about willful and deliberate attempts, attempts attacks or temptation meant to destroy someone, whether it's a Christian or someone of innocence. Uh, Jesus used the example of a, children, uh, of a child trying to... Basically, trying to actively destroy a child sin-wise to basically corrupt them, destroy them spiritually or physically. We're not talking about a drug deal. Hey, dude, you want to, you know. We're not talking about a drug dealer, you know. Those are sins that, that, that are temptations that end up where we indulge the flesh's various lusts. Jesus is talking about something way more serious here. He's talking about something very destructive. This is not just attacking a lust of the flesh or this or that. This is deliberately destroying somebody spiritually, leading somebody in temptation, spirit, uh, where you can lead somebody into temptation or to have them sin so bad that you take them down with you. That's what we're talking about here. This has nothing to do with drug dealers or anything of the sort. This is what they're talking about when they're talking about offenses. This is why Jesus said it would be better if a millstone were to cast your neck and cut off the sea. Or if you offend one of these little ones, it would be better if you, if you were never born. 
this we're talking about serious sins. We're not talking about, you know, some guy, you know, offering your kid a cigarette here. We're talking about serious sins, serious temptations, serious spiritual attacks that the person who does so deliberately to another person with the intent of taking them down. There's probably more we're going to be talking about later of why this has come up, um, but I'll talk about when we get there. So John 14.23, to get on to another subject and lighten, lighten it up a bit. Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we, and we will come unto him and make our boat with him. So, time for a little breather. We have some. We can talk a little bit about uh, the the mechanics of what I like to refer to as the mine shaft. As you can see, there are these elevators here, and as you can see, uh, you take the elevators up. It'll take you outside, and then you just run across, and you take another elevator back down. This is um, this is all there is to it. Uh, you have elevators outside that take you to various parts of the complex. I took all the mine shaft because of the way it looks. Now, if you were to come back here, uh, back here, you, you know how we took the elevator up. If you came back, if I was somehow to make it back here right now, uh, go back down here, go this way, I would find this empty because once you take an elevator up, it stays up. You have to take it back down. This is important, so you have to keep track of where the elevators are as well. Um, shouldn't be much of a problem here because this looks this looks like it's going to be more connected. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go clear out this section, go down here, and then make my way back over here. So I uh, the mine shaft is pretty interesting. Um, that's pretty much the mechanics: elevators and running through and this connection. Do I have anything we can do here? Don't listen to anyone else, especially if they're trying to teach you something. Do I have anything here? I don't think I have anything. But uh, let's see. Uh, it's probably going to be a problem because it's all about teaching. Let's see. Well, we can't do anything in this section yet. Well, maybe we can, but we have to tackle it from the other direction. So back up we go. Now, um, there's actually I have a lot of uh, my child. Um, there, are, like I said, there are a few sections that I remember quite a bit um, because we went to these quite a bit. And this, I remember a lot. No, go back, go back, Captain Bible. Quit running away, bad Captain Bible. I remember a lot about the section. Um, this um, actually was my sister's favorite area in the game, and as such, we I saw the section a lot. Um, my sister loved this section. Um, we both had our favorite areas. This was my sister's for... I don't know what drew to her... Drew, drew, made her like this section so much. But she did. Uh, my favorite area, believe it or not... Um, you think it'd be like a flying section or whatever. I like the monolith, mainly because it's blue. And I love the color blue. If it's blue, I like it. Captain Bible's cape is blue, I like him. Hello, Cyber. It doesn't matter if you love and obey Jesus. God is still very far away, and he won't have anything to do with you. However, I think we got something here. Um, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Does this, does this work? Come on, defend. So yeah, my favorite area was the monolith. I know it's kind of strange to think that was my favorite area, especially since I had a hard time remembering the guy in it. But yeah, I like the monolith. Uh, it's blue, it's cool, and because of that, it's it's kind of still my favorite area. Um, but yeah, we love this section. We probably probably saw this section almost more than any other section besides the beginning section in the game. Um, we'll talk about this at length later. So, I mean, I have a, a lot of memories of this section. It's kind of cool. I was reading Psalms 139, 1-3. I have that somewhere. We're going to be talking about that. Okay. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. So, does this mean that God understands me, loves me, and watches over me all the time? But not in a creepy way, right? Right! In this psalm, David is giving God praise. 
Sometimes when we come to God, we forget that He knows everything there is to know about us. We try to explain our prayers to God, and we might try to bargain with Him to get our answer. Let's remember that God knows all things, and He knows the very thing that is needed in our lives. Um, yeah, that's kind of, um... There's, I, I think while I'm at it, I'm going to go back. I can get to that one room real quick, and I think I'm going to do that before I continue on. Just clear the section out all the way. Um... Yeah, I actually wanted to see if there's more to Psalms 139 before I started this uh, than than they were giving uh, than they said than they said. And actually, no, that's pretty much about it. Psalm 139 is a psalm talking and praising God because of His omnipresence and His omniscience. Why is omnipresence and not uh, omniscience? Omnipresence means that God is everywhere at the same time. So yeah, He's everywhere. You know, look, you know. Every single place in the universe, seen and unseen, God inhabits everything and is everywhere at the same time. He sees it all. Omniscience means he knows it all. He can, he, he knows what you're going to say before you even a, before you even ask him. He he knows that much. He knows what you're thinking. Okay. So basically, it's a psalm praising God because he is everywhere at once and he knows everything. And he's just that powerful, and that's what David's praising him about, and that's what that song's about. So yeah, Bible I love the Bible powers. Talked about quite a bit. Had to slow down to talk about quite a bit because we would never get things done if I didn't. And you pe- people just want to see it from a gameplay point of view. You're probably disappointed that I stand still for a little bit while, but from Apologetics point of view, I need to do that. Hello, smiley person. Jeremiah 2911. Hey, no, this is not what I wanted to talk about. But we'll get there. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So it says here that God really does care what happens to me. Sure. Sometimes, as we go through life, we lose track of the fact that God is with us. If things are not going smoothly, smoothly we ask, where is he? Or why is this happening? Or God doesn't care. God's overall plans for us are good. Accepting God's plan and his correction leads to maturity on our walk with him. Just as I was saying, God knows everything. He's everywhere. Omniscience, omnipresence. Um, and yeah, God, plan- God has uh, certain plans for people. Now, that does not mean that um, they have to follow his plans. Some people... Stuff happens because, you know, sometimes people don't follow God's plans. That's not his fault. And, there, you know, there is a certain degree of um, coincidence and chance in the world. You know, saying that this happened and therefore it's God's fault is not necessarily the case either. All in all, knowing that God's plans for you if you follow him and if, if you live your life according to his will and you have a relationship with him are good. And as long as you keep that in mind, you know, stuff will happen. You know. Hey, let's go this way first. Why not? It's all closed off. This might be a good place to go. So people, people I, I, I've seen people who lost faith in God because they had a loved one die. And why would a God do this? Well, there's death. And we don't have that yet. Uh, we'll be getting to that. I guess we'll be going to that, that area later. You know, why Why would a loving God do this? Well, who said that God did that? Death is a natural part of our being. Life sucks sometimes. You know? God didn't... God, keep this in mind. God never promised... Everybody, that they were they were going to have the best time here. I don't think we have this. Let me check real quick. Um, do 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 do. You think they have Genesis for this? But who knows? We've seen them do weird, weird stuff before. Can we go this way now?
See, what did stupid here say? Just to double check all this stuff. I don't want to get Lulot lost because of stupidity again this time. As you guys probably heard from my little rant tirade thing. Okay, communion. I know which one that is. So, communion and creation and... Okay. Um... A lot of people, you know, God never promised you that you would have, you know, the bestest life ever. You know, I'm sorry, sorry to inform you about this, but life is just temporary. However, He did promise that um, He would never leave you for, or forsake you. You know, He promised a lot of things. He promised to be, promised to be there. You know, He. He promised to help you in certain aspects, and that he would prepare a place for you. Some people forget, especially if they're Christians, that this is not our our final. This is not the Christian's final destination. This is this is just temporary. It may be eighty years temporary, but in the end, it's just temporary. It's fleeting, as Solomon would say, "Vanity of vanity, all is vanities." Okay. We had to have something on the teaching stuff. Okay, there has to be. What, what, what's that? Okay. Teaching. Let's see. I'm sorry. I'm 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 gonna laugh at this one. Don't listen to anyone else, especially if they're trying to teach you something. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction, but he that regards reproof shall be honored. Bible power. Insert face palm here. There are a lot better um there are a lot better scriptures um and proverbs that pretty much would have done a better job there. When they're talking about reproof, they're talking about correction. At that point, that was about that was not about teaching, that was about correction. You know, being, you know, somebody correcting you on something. You being reproved on something. That has nothing to do with teaching. Why are you what's wrong with you guys? Seriously. You have a whole book that is about, you know, Listening to instruction, listening to wisdom, gathering wisdom, you know, loving knowledge, loving wisdom, and you have a whole book that is on that. You pick a scripture that is not. What is wrong with you? Seriously, are you guys? Were you guys not even trying? Psychics and astrologers have the inside scoop on the spiritual realm. Oh, we should have some of this. Blah blah blah. Do -do, do -do. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do 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 Hmm. Did that work? That is close, but I think there's a better one. Well then, Captain Bible, we have quite a place to explore. Let's go exploring. This way. Keep running. Good. So, you guys enjoying the mine shaft so far? I am. It's way better than, you know, the flying segment. It doesn't matter if you love and obey Jesus. God is still very far away. He won't have anything to do with you. Yank. Stabby McStabstab! Ding ding! Oh wait, that's the wrong cyber. Ah. You know, I'm I'm enjoying this. This is this seems to be going. Pr I I I want don't want to say pretty well because you know foot and mouth. But compared to what could be, let's go clear this out over here. Compared to how some of the other sections, 
giving me the runaround. This seems a lot more straightforward. I'm enjoying this a lot more. Um, very well prepared for it. Hello there. Hello there. As long as you believe there's only one God, you'll be saved. However, James says, Thou believest that there is one God? Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Let me paraphrase uh, James. Oh, you believe there's a God, right? Well, good for you. You know what that, what that means? Absolutely nothing. Because guess what? Uh, Satan and his devils have uh, believe in God because I've seen him personally. You want a bre you want a cookie? What you know? People go. I believe in God. That way, I'm going to be okay. What? What? Seriously, is God supposed to be impressed? You believe in Him? Congrats. Take it a step further. God's plans for you stink. However, God uh, in Jeremiah it says, "For I know the thoughts that I think towards you," saith the Lord, "thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an unexpected end." We stab me in the eye. I kind of go through the overview quickly. Oh, finally, you give me something for traps. We'll see how useful that is. God made a choice to die for our sins. Yes? Nope. Be sad. Oh well. We have plenty of rooms to, to search down here.